Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here to take a look at ChatGPT and how it can be used to help you play Civilization VI. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard about ChatGPT already. It has been in the news for many, many different things, and if you're unsure of what it is, or maybe you haven't heard of it yet, ChatGPT is basically a machine learning model that has been trained to be able to act as a chatbot. So it has been trained on, you know, millions and millions of examples of conversation with people. It has been trained on a number of databases, you know, from the internet, things like that, and and basically what it does is it uses the information that's been trained on to talk to you and answer questions that you may have. That's a, a very gross oversimplification of what ChatGPT is, but, uh, you know, there's there's thousands of videos out there already about how ChatGPT works. So if you're interested more in that, go ahead and check out some of those videos. But the basics of what it is, you can think of it kind of like a search engine, except it has a little bit more personality and you can just kind of ask it anything. Imagine how like old people, you know, use Google search. Um, they're like, hello, Google, can you recommend me some you know, uh, chicken pot pie recipes, please. Thank you. Uh, you can talk to chat GPT like that and it'll actually give you meaningful results. So we're going to see what it knows about Civilization VI and if it is possible to use it to help you play Civilization VI. So let's start off with just a very basic question. I want to play Civilization VI. Uh, I can't talk and type at the same time, but I want to play Civilization VI. How can I get started? And you'll see that we ask it how we can get started playing Civilization VI, and it's going to go ahead and generate us a response. So it's going to say, you know, Civilization VI is a fun and engaging strategy game. Here are a few steps you can follow to get started. Purchase the game. Obviously a very good way to get started. Uh, you have to install the game. Uh, choose your game mode. All right. Uh, we can choose between single player, multiplayer, and scenarios. Uh, select a civilization. Uh, so... Each one has its own unique abilities, units, and buildings. Very good. And we can select the one we want to play as. Uh, we can start the game, expand our civilization, and enjoy the game. Uh, so this is actually pretty good in terms of a, a general overview into how you could get started. Uh, you know, obviously you need to buy the game before you can play it, install it, uh, pick your civilization, and start. So this is actually, it's pretty good. So now maybe let's ask it, okay, so uh, assuming that we're able to purchase and install the game on our own, what do you say let's ask it uh, if it can recommend some civilizations for us to play as a beginner? And assuming that it's been trained on a good database, I would hope that it would at least say Trajan of Rome. That's the one that I kind of give for everybody whenever they ask me what civ is a good one to play first. So let's go ahead and let's see what ChatGPT will recommend for a good beginner civilization. All right, number one, first up on the list is Rome. Very, very good. Uh, let's see, what's it say about Rome? It's a great civilization for beginners. It's a well-rounded set of abilities that are useful in many different situations. It's also relatively easy to play as Rome as their abilities focus on production and military strength. Uh, their abilities don't really focus on production, do they? But military strength, I would say, is fair. Uh, and it's very correct in saying that Rome has a well-rounded set of abilities that are useful in different situations. I think that's a pretty good uh, recommendation. China, um, I don't know if I would say China's a good Civ for beginners, because it requires, you know, knowledge of Eurekas and inspirations to use properly. Um, but I think that that's maybe okay. Japan, I think, is actually a very good one. Let's see, what does it say about Japan? It has a good, or has a strong focus on military. Kind of true. Cultural development, also kind of true. Uh, it gives bonuses for fighting on their home continent and also makes them a good defensive civilization. So this is something that we can see that is actually just incorrect. So this is something that ChatGPT does sometimes. So... As I mentioned, it's been trained on millions and millions of conversations and other sources of information, um, but ChatGPT doesn't actually understand what it's saying. So it says that uh, Japan's bonus gives them a bonus for fighting on their home continent. This is just straight up wrong. So this is something that if you're going to use ChatGPT for Civilization VI, uh, know that sometimes it is totally wrong. But overall, I would say that uh, it has given a pretty good response here. So we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select to play as Rome and we're going to ask it where to go from there. But uh, overall, actually, it's been pretty helpful thus far. So uh, what do you say? Let's go ahead and perhaps boot up into the game and then we can ask it some further questions. All right. So I have booted into the game now and we're going to go ahead and we are going to select Rome as our leader. If I can find Rome, I need to remember what the heck. All right. So there's Trajan right there. So we're going to go ahead and select Rome as our civilization. Uh, we're going to play on, we'll just say we're going to play on Prince difficulty. We'll leave, we'll leave everything else on, on the default settings and let's see how much ChatGPT is able to help us whenever we actually go ahead and start the game. And while we wait for that, what do you say let's go ahead and ask it some further questions about what we should play? So uh, let's let it know that we're going to play Rome. We're going to say I'm going to play a game as Rome. Um, and then let's ask it what victory condition we should go for. 
And let's go ahead and let's see what, what ChatGBT is going to tell us. All right, so it's going to say that we have several options. We could do domination victory is number one. Uh, Rome has strong military capabilities, which makes them well-suited for domination. Uh, number two, it has this culture victory. Number three, science. Uh, four, diplomatic. Uh, I think that those are all pretty good choices of victory conditions. Let's ask it to decide on one for those. All right, and it said, sure, based on Rome's strength, I would recommend aiming for a domination victory. I think that's a very reasonable take to assume. Uh, honestly, I would say I would say Rome's Rome is very good at domination victory, and it's probably probably one of their better victory types. So, all right. So ChatGPT has decided that we're going to play domination victory. So what do you say? Let's hop back into the game here and let's take a look at our spawn. All right. Well, for one, we have a very good spawn. Um, we are on a grassland hills tile. You could see that we have some. Some other types of tiles around. Uh, what what do you think is going to happen if we ask ChatGPT where we should settle in a game? Let's say what makes a good first city location. It says look for a location that has a variety of resources and terrain features such as rivers, mountains, and hills. They can provide bonus bonuses to production, food, and other resources. Access to water. Cities located near water sources such as river or coast have access to additional food production and trade opportunities. I mean, that's not why you settle on water in the game, but it, it is right that you should settle on water. Uh, strategic resources, nearby civs and city states, defense, and adjacency bonuses. Okay, actually, those are those are basically six perfect reasons why you should pick a particular settling spot in a game. So, um, obviously, know what a good settling uh, spot looks like. So, we're just going to settle wherever we think. Um, I think that where we are right now is fine. We got a pretty good campus tile over here. We're along some water. We're on a grassland hills tile. We've got a 2-2 tile. Uh, within range of our capital. So let's go ahead and let's settle our first city. And then, of course, we need to ask ChatGPT, what should we build first? So you'll notice here that ChatGPT tends to do a few things uh, whenever you ask it questions. Whenever you ask it what you should do, it very rarely will give you a particular option. A lot of the time, it's going to give you uh, several options and then you can choose from them. So you'll, you'll notice that a lot of the responses we've asked so far, uh, it, it will give us like a list of you know three to six things that we can choose from. So uh, some of the things that the uh, ChatGPT has recommended is Scout, Monument, Slinger, Builder, or Settler. I think all, all five of those are good. Uh, the only one that's a problem is Settler because you literally cannot build it whenever you are on your very first turn. Um, but it says, uh, for, for Scout, it says a Scout unit should be your first priority. Um, so go ahead, follow ChatGPT's advice, and we're going to build a Scout. And then obviously, you know, in any game, we would kind of just go about and explore around. So maybe let's go ahead and ask it, what, what should we be doing in the early game? Oh, we need to ask it for technology as well. Okay, I'm I'm actually genuinely impressed at how much it knows about uh, the early game of Civ Six. So I've I've asked it what I should be doing in the early game. It says your main goal should be to establish your civilization, expand your territory, and develop your infrastructure. And it says here are some tips for what you should be doing in the early game. Explore the map. Use your scout unit to explore nearby areas and locate valuable resources, natural wonders, and other civilizations. Very good advice. Found your first city. Obviously, very good advice. Uh, build basic infrastructure. Uh, construct monuments, granary, water mill to provide your cities with culture, food, and production. I think that's pretty good advice. Uh, develop your technology in civics. Build up your military and expand your territory. Honestly, I think I am genuinely impressed because that is exactly what I would give to a beginner. And this advice, I'm so this advice is very good for beginners because it's very general, um, and I think it's it's applicable enough to beginners where you don't really know what you need to do uh, specifically. But this can give you a very general guideline as to what you want to do in a game. And maybe let's ask it, what should my early goal as Rome be? Or maybe let's ask it, let's ask it, what technology should I aim for in the early game as Rome? And if it if it actually produces a response to this, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be extremely impressed. I don't expect it to really know. Uh, so as Rome, you have a unique ability called All Roads Lead to Rome, which automatically constructs roads. Um, okay, so this can provide you a significant boost in your trade and mobility throughout the game. And the early game should focus on technologies that will help you take advantage of this ability and expand your empire quickly. That is an incredibly good response. All right, let's see the technologies it recommends though. Iron working. Um, ironworking is actually probably the number one thing that I would recommend because it gets you your unique unit, and it mentions that. Uh, can be used to produce powerful uh, melee units such as the Legion, which is unique to Rome. So I am insanely impressed at how well ChatGPT has been able to answer that. That's what we're going to go ahead and do in this game. We're going to aim for our Legion. So uh, for the sake of making it simple, we're just going to beeline for that tech. Um, 
or may, maybe maybe it won't beeline yet, but we will at least go mining as our first technology. Uh, but you can see that ChatGPT is actually very capable of recommending you things that you can do in the early game to kind of give you some guidance for how to play your first game as a civilization. So now I'm just going to go ahead and explore, and uh, we, we can kind of figure out a point where we want to ask it another question. So we found some barbarians. Um, I kind of think I, I was considering asking ChatGPT if it knows what barbarians are, but judging by its response to the previous questions, I would almost guarantee that it knows what barbarians are and how you can deal with them. All right, so we've built a scout, which we're going to send out. Um, we can probably, so it also advised we build up a military early on, so maybe we can go ahead and we can go for a, uh, a warrior next. All right, and now we have another option. We have policy cards. So let's ask it, I don't know if it's going to know what first policy card should we run as Rome. I would say, I mean, definitely discipline. I would say probably discipline in, I guess either one of those is okay, but let's see if it knows enough to actually answer this. All right, so I've asked it what initial policy cards I, sh I should run, and it's, it's providing some ones that are not exactly initial. Um, so it's recommending urban planning, uh, early empire, discipline, a gauge. All right, well, okay, it does actually have a gauge, and survey. Um... Is that what survey does? Boost to builder production? Am I wrong? No, okay. Survey survey is the one that gives you experience for recon units. So once again, um, I'm telling you, ChatGPT sometimes gets a little bit confused in what it's talking about because it itself doesn't really understand what it's saying. Um, but in general, these are actually some good recommendations, uh, particularly uh, early empire and urban planning. I think both of those are actually very solid recommendations. Uh, so it has given us for our very first policy cards, but that's okay. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and run Discipline and God King. Man, also, just kind of as a side note, we have we have an insane, ridiculous food-producing area right here with these three sugar tiles. We've got two maize. We've got, well, it's on a floodplains. Oh, man, we can get a, a big city going out there. I'm also going to switch over here to a settler um, just so that way, you know, I mean, I know ChatGPT has said that we can build up a military, but I would kind of like to build a settler instead. So as I mentioned before, ChatGPT is pretty good at giving you general recommendations or perhaps a list of options for how you could play the game. Uh, it's not particularly great for giving you exact specifics. You kind of have to ask it multiple times before it actually makes a decision on what you should pick. Uh, so what else should we go for here? So this is where I'm going to take some, some personal thought. I'm going to go for pottery just because I see that we have planes tiles or not plain styles, uh, flood planes here with plenty of bonus resources here. So we're going to go ahead and get pottery as we continue to beat up this barbarian encampment. All right, so we've cleared our first barbarian encampment. We've gotten some gold. Uh, we've gotten a major flood on one of our rivers down here. I really want to meet somebody because I want to ask ChatGPT, or I want to see if ChatGPT is going to suggest that we should kill somebody. <laughs> if something tells me it's probably not going to do that, but, um, but I think it is definitely a possibility. All right, on a side note, this is an incredible spawn. <laughs> I'm very happy with how this one has turned out. All right, this is another question I want to ask it just because I want to see if it's going to know what I'm talking about. So as you know, I'm sure a lot of you that play Civilization VI know that if a barbarian finds your territory, it gets this little exclamation mark over its head. If you're a beginner, you might not exactly know what that means. So if we ask ChatGBT what this exclamation point means, let's see if it has a response. So I'm asking it, a barbarian scout has an exclamation point over its head. What does that mean? When a barbarian scout has an exclamation point over its head in Civilization VI, it means that the scout has spotted one of your units or cities and is warning its tribe about your presence. This can trigger an attack from nearby barbarian units, so it's important to be careful and prepare for a possible attack. When a barbarian scout spots one of your units of cities, it will return to its encampment and alert the other barbarians of your presence. The barbarians may then send a raiding party to attack one of your units or cities. That is honestly an incredible explanation. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is this is why uh, this is why I'm a dying YouTuber nowadays. Because what's the point in even making guides if you can just go ask ChatGPT? So you can see even very nuanced things like this. Uh, ChatGPT has been trained on enough data that it it knows that an exclamation part an exclamation point over a barbarian scout's head in Civilization VI means that it's going to go back to its encampment and then send a raiding party towards your civilization. So really, an impressive amount of knowledge that this thing has. I'm going to ask ChatGPT a question that I know everybody always asks me. Let's ask it, how far apart should we settle two cities? Because everybody asks me this question. They're like, why do you settle four tiles apart? Why don't you settle five tiles apart? Why did you settle five tiles apart? And why not four? So let's ask it, how far apart should we settle our cities? And I would, I would hope it says four or five. Okay, so it's it's already it's it's giving 
A nuanced answer, ideal distance between cities and Civilization VI can vary depending on several factors. A good rule of thumb is to settle your cities at least four to six tiles away from each other. That's a perfect answer. Settling cities too close together can lead to a number of problems. If your cities are too close, they may may end up competing for the same resources and tiles, which can slow down their growth and development. Exactly correct. Uh, If you settle too close to another civilization's borders, it may lead to tension and even war. Exactly correct. Setting your cities too far far apart can be a problem. If your cities are too spread out, it can be difficult to defend them against enemy attacks. Correct. It can also be challenging to maintain a cohesive empire and keep all of your cities connected and productive. That one's only, like, kind of true, but... So, it says fixed tiles... I think it's 100% correct. So we're going to go ahead and settle our city. Where should I settle the city? I might settle this one right here on top of this sugar resource. The other thing I'm going to ask it is, how many many cities should I settle in the ancient era? Once again, it's of course going to give us a a a nuanced answer. It says, however, good rule of thumb is to aim to settle at least three to four cities in the ancient era. I think that's a very good response. (laughs) So... As with everything that we've asked it so far, it's going to give us some more explanation about exactly why. And once again, I think that it is uh, pretty correct in in what it's recommending here. So three to four cities, I say, is very good. So that's what we're going to aim for in this game. Obviously, we only have two right now. So since I need three to four, we'll go ahead and we'll select another settler next. So we've met a a city-state. We've met Mexico City. Um, I'm sure I could ask it, you know, what city-states are in Civilization VI. At this point, I'm pretty convinced that it would know what it is, so I'm not even going to bother asking, but if you're a beginner and you need to know, I'm sure you could ask it, uh, you could probably ask it what it what it means that the city-state is orange, you know, what, what it means, what's a suzerain bonus, how do I become the suzerain, all of those things. At this point, I'm fairly confident that ChatGPT would be able to answer those questions. We've also settled our second city, um, and we've gotten our free road and our, uh, our free monument in the city. So let's go ahead and maybe let's get a builder here. But yeah, I think that's probably where we're going to call it for here because I think I've kind of made the point that that I've been looking to make. Uh, You can see that ChatGPT is actually an incredibly good resource for teaching someone who has never played Civ 6 how to play Civ 6. It's able to, you can ask it questions as you would ask a normal human being. So it's kind of like having, you know, a, a sexy gamer in your computer that you can just ask questions to and it's going to give you civilization 6 tips that you can use and apply right there as you play the game so uh, ChatGPT is free to try out at least for right now all that you have to do is you have to make a uh, account on OpenAI. i'll put the link in the video description to ChatGPT if you want to try it out for civ 6 uh as far as where it is right now yeah i would say it's very good at giving general tips Uh, as you saw today it is occasionally wrong with the things it says Uh, So for something like Civ 6, that's really not a big deal. Obviously, you know, don't ask it for medical advice or anything like that, because sometimes it is wrong. And if it gives you something wrong and your game goes poorly in Civilization 6, well, just know that, you know, sometimes it gives you things that are total nonsense. But uh, for beginners, I think that it's insanely good to, you know, go ahead and ask it questions. Even if maybe you've been playing for a while, you don't understand how culture victory works. You could probably ask it that and it would give you at least some sort of answer. Or you, of course, could go watch some more sexy gamer videos. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see me use it further into the game to see exactly the extent to which it knows, because uh, obviously we've asked a just very basic question this in, in this video, but uh, if you want to see more about this, let me know in the comment section below. But thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.